Hello, writers and crafters. I'm Valerie Isan. And I'm Eric Mertz. And this is episode 79 of the podcast, and it's August 10th, 2022, as we record this. Today, our main topic is planning your creative path. Um, we do want to thank our new patron. Yay, I love new patrons. <laughs> uh, new patron, Sean Sharp. And thanks to Mary Van Everbrook for upping her pledge this week as well. And yeah, thank, thank you, you to all of our current patrons. We totally appreciate you. And if you're not a patron and you want to be and get all the extra goodies that come with it, you can go to patreon.com slash Valerie Isan, I-H-S-A-N. Um, we've got a couple of announcements. You want to do that first before we talk about what we're reading or do you want to do that afterwards? Let's do that afterwards. Okay. What are you reading? Oh, uh, well, here's a funny story, right? I started reading, um, Summer Night, the next book in the Dresden Files. I mentioned that in the last podcast. Uh -huh. Went out on a, a, on a quick overnight trip and left the book in the, the Airbnb. So Bummer. yeah, that happens, right? Um, on Facebook, I was posting pictures of the books that the host had sort of right. decoratively placed around. Uh -huh. And now my, you know, my book, book with my bookmark <laughs> is, is going to be one of them for future guests. So um, Bummer. I'm that, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that happens. Um, so I haven't acquired a new copy of that book yet because I'm going to read it in paper. So I'm reading, um, I'm reading Jeff Vandermeer. I don't know. He wrote Annihilation. He wrote mm -hmm. a, um, a bunch of really kind of cool sci-fi books. Um, and I'm reading one of his little short reads called The Strange Bird. Uh, and it's a strange read. Um, it's like a novella. And it's from this world that he's got where there's like these sort of like cyber humanoid animals are created. And it's there. There's like a bear and a bird and some other animals. And it's just really weird, wacky stuff. But it's kind of runs the line between literature and, and genre fiction, which is uh, it's it's a great read. I, I sometimes read it little bits and then I have to stop myself and go, what did I, what just happened? Like I, what was that experience? Um, Cause the, yeah, there's like all this consciousness, the animals, the the cyber animals are becoming conscious and they're reacting to things. And so it's a weird read. It's definitely worth picking up if you liked um, Annihilation or any of those books of his. I... What about you? I am reading The Many Daughters of Athong Moy by, I don't know, the, I forget who the author is. I'll just put it in the show notes. I'm almost done with that. So I already have my next book picked out, which is. Ooh, yeah, yeah. I love lining them up, right? You got it. Yep, yep, yep. This is. Don't go to the is... library now. Don't go to the library because then something's going to jump in there. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. I better not get another hold release from my library. Yeah. Um, this one is a memoir called The Sound of a Wild Snail Eating by Elizabeth what? Tova Bailey. And The Sound of a Wild Snail Eating. Yeah. So she's laid up. All I know about the book is that she's um, ill or something. She's laid up in bed and she, she's bedridden. She can't get out. And there happens to be this little snail that has taken up residence in her little bedside table. So she just watches it and talks about it. And <laughs> so I don't know anything else about it other than that and somebody had ordered it at the bookstore and I was like wow that looks really interesting so I and ordered myself a copy points for great title right I mean that's yeah yeah speaking of great title I've been trying to come up with a new title for the memoir and I think I might have it um, Ooh. which of course solidifies the need for a new cover <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere a cover designer just like, you know, got all diabolical <laughs> cartoon fingers over that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I just don't know if I should add a, a subtitle to it or if that just makes it too clunky. So I think I'm going to poll my readers and give them, you know, some options and see what they come up with. But Interesting. Yeah. So I Interesting. hope that the new title is more evocative and makes you pick it up. We should, at some point, talk about covers here. I know it's a podcast. I know most people are listening and not looking, and, and covers are a visual mm -hmm. concept. But I think, you know, I'm at this point where putting out a book in, in a week, in one day, so eight days to, to freedom for Chasing Shadows. Um, 
but the cover, you know, like each book, like when you're doing a series, having the right cover becomes a balancing act of to the what I loved in book one. Does it is it carry through to book three? Mm-hmm. Uh, covers are covers are an ongoing conversation, even for well established authors too. I see so. Um, let's see what else in terms of reading, I'm still kind of reading the dude and the Zen master. That's one of those that I pick up and read, you know, three or four pages here and there. It's kind of like a philosophy, but funny. And so I like that. And I did just, finish, I, have... oh, go ahead. I did just finish reading, um, newsletter ninja two, which is, <gasps> oh. that's a good book. And I just was on a book, uh, po- a book club podcast or whatever, uh, yesterday. And then we talked about it. Um, is that um, worth picking up for somebody who read the first one four years ago? Or absolutely, because this one is all about reader magnets. It's just talking about reader magnets. I mean, she kind of brings in a couple of uh, concepts, you know, from the first book in terms of newsletter health or whatever. But, um, but yeah, I thought it was. I have some great ideas, and also have determined that the reader magnet I have been working on and was ready to put out is not the one I'm going to be able to put out (laughs) based on reading that I'm going to have to write a new one (laughs) this is why I don't try I try not to learn anything because as soon as I learn something I'm going to find out what I did what didn't work that's not true I want to read this book because like the newsletter is my constant focus and without it Mm -hmm. you know I don't I don't have an audience so yeah the other book, I just have to do a quick plug for Sasha Black's new book, um, The Anatomy of a Bestseller. I read that in like a day. It was awesome. And I've already started putting in um, some deconstructing to a couple of my favorite novels. And I'm trying to like incorporate that into the manuscript I'm working on now. So mm. that's inspiring and awesome. And so all good stuff. I should put that in my have- resources. I have that book that I pick at. It's um, it's called um, and the kicker is I think I might have mentioned it. It's a book. It's interviews with I think there's like forty five really big comedy writers in it, and they just talk about their craft and and what they find funny and insp- what they think comedy is, what inspire what inspires them. What um, it's really interesting because I think comedies become the idea of being funny or being a comedian is is under the microscope right now with you know, there's a lot of comedians who are being outed and, and canceled because of their, the subject matter of their, their humor. And then mm-hmm. there's, you know, so there's, it's, I think we're having a real, I, I don't like this term, but it, I think it's accurate. Like, I think we're having a, a cultural conversation about comedy, like what's funny, what's not funny, what's, what's in and out of bounds. And it's Ali interesting. And I have be- this conversation at home quite a bit, actually, because yeah. our, 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 uh, what, what we think is funny is slightly different. <laughs> Yeah, Lisa and I like we if there's a Venn diagram of our humor, it's like there's a lot of overlap, but then there's that little bit of outside. Yep. You know, where she's you know, a little more like this and I'm a little more like that. But it's it's an interesting book. If you're interested in comedy, it's it's a massive, massive book. And it it I'll probably take a year to read it, just picking at it, but it's it's just really interesting what a lot of the how a lot of comedians come up with their stuff. And I'll just throw out a little a little fact that I read yesterday. The original writers of The Office, the, the British off, the guys who created that show, their big inspiration was um, Bridges of Madison County, which, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, you, you know, you just do a double take when you hear that. But it's it was fascinating the way he talked about how sincere the, the, the connection was between the characters in that movie and how... Uh, they always said like they're really hard, you know, they they got, they really pushed to get close to each other. And he said, that was the dynamic we wanted for all the characters. They really wanted to be close to each other, but there was always some comedic opposite that kept them from really uh-huh. engaging. Oh, that's and, so interesting. Right. So who would have thought? And I, I think that's where I love those sort of books where it's like, I would have never thought that it gives you an opportunity to look at something in a different way. And what was the title of the book? I want to put it in the resources list. It's called And the Kicker Is. And the Kicker Is. And there's a whole se- like the uh, the the comedians in it that they interview are there's such a wide variety. There's the there's the author who wrote The Graduate, the screenwriter who wrote The Graduate. There's the guys from The Office, um, Ivan Reitman. There's just a bunch of 
and there's not necessarily names either people who just were staff writers on certain shows for a really long time who write about punching up jokes you know from other writers it's it's an interesting look at what's funny mm -hmm. which i always think i love that 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 quote where it says um you know if you the longer you look at something or there's a, i'll butcher it but there's the longer you look at a joke the less funny it gets mm -hmm. um which i think is true but boy reading about comedy doesn't spoil it it can really it's really been informative so that's cool yeah well um so let's talk about it our announcements um cool. i'm going to be reading selections from my new memoir along with um, a couple of other authors um from uh the eugene area at tsunami books on sunday this coming sunday august 14th at 4 p.m so if you're local come on down for that and also we had a great comment um on one of the shows it was uh your it was your show, Eric Mertz, part one. Uh oh, um, oh I didn't yeah, see this. The comment was fantastic discussion. It's very nice to know that the feelings, thinking, and experiences I have as a writer are shared by accomplished authors. Thank oh, you for wow. sharing your knowledge and experiences. So I just wanted to put that out there. That was from um, from Mary, our our patron that just upped her pledge. So yay. well, that feels good. Yeah. Okay, so today we're talking about planning. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> you it's love planning. Of, so. I love planning. It's so, so exciting. So do I. So do I. So, um, how do we want to start this? You said <laughs> a couple of weeks, months ago that you slated August as kind of your recentering. What am I going to do with my career? What do I want to do for the rest of the year? Is that something you do every August or is that, was that just like, Oh, it's time for me to do that. How often do you well, do I'm just going to pause and say, I think it's funny that we both paused when we started this topic about planning, because, you know, we were kind of like, how do we want to talk about this? <laughs> um, so even planners can come off the hip on something. Cause this is a hard topic. Um, we don't want to like sound like it's the tendency sometimes for me is to feel micromanaging, like I'm micromanaging myself or so I don't, this was, this was completely the product of life. Um, my kid is in, you know, out of school. August was the month where he, he doesn't have any camps this month. He had camps all the rest of the summer. So this is, I, I looked at this as being the month if anything was there was where there was going to be an interruption to the steady writing flow that this was going to be it. So I thought like, well, why not just beat the, beat the world to that, you know, to that moment and, and use this time in a way that I could, um, I don't know, just use it less structured. You know, if right. I was going to lose my writing time and I was going to get a couple of hour, hours in a weird time, let's just use that to plan, to think ahead, to do that. So it's yeah, totally random. Okay. Um, were you surprised? But I'm going to do this, but I with? will keep, but I will sort of set this out. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to jump you there, but like, I think this is valuable to like to have a month or have a period of time when you can kind of pause on the type a, a career pusher and sort of step in and say like, let me just imagine for a little bit and mm -hmm. how to, and then try to put that into place. Yeah. I kind of think this. more often is better for me. Um, but I take I know that's, we talked about self-care before, and this is sort of right. one of the things I do just to stay sane. And that's to have um, weekly time that I set aside to, to just sort of think about the week, plan meals out. I don't, you know, just what, what am I doing yeah. this week? What do I want to get done? And, and, and then this, um, I call it a passion roadmap because that's what my planner calls it, but doing this <laughs> sort of, um, the good name. <laughs> doing this sort of, um, I mean, it doesn't have to apply just to career right. because as an entrepreneur, a lot of our family work gets sort of, it bleeds into each other sometimes. Yeah. So, um, you know, doing a house project where you're building an office in the backyard for your writing business, you know, like that's the kind of thing that would sort of bleed in and yeah. well, if I, yeah. So if, so this doesn't have to be just business planning, but for this month, that's what I chose to do was just make right. it about business plans. But I do this like twice a year yeah. and uh, in a macro way, right? You're talking about like, okay, big picture, big picture, Val time, 
you do that a couple times a year. Yeah. And, and I try to, I usually do like a one month goal. Well, actually I don't usually do a one month. I usually do a three month goal, six months, one year and three years during my, my planning session that I do mm -hmm. twice a year. And then, you know, all of the things that I want to get accomplished within three months, you know, will be on like a little list. And, and then after I get that all out on paper, then I choose one that I want to focus on, you know, so that my mm -hmm. attention and energy isn't too scattered. Like if I'm only going to get one of these things done in the next three months, what is the thing that's going to make the most impact or make my life better or, you know, whatever, whatever quality it is that you are measuring with, but right. Um, so that's kind of macroly <laughs> how I do it. Right. I, I developed this probably, I would say earlier this year, and I think I'm going to refine this process. Mm -hmm. I just do quarterly things. I try to look okay. at things like the next quarter we'll go into is what October, November, December. So that's the next, that's quarter four. Next month, I'll start really, well, actually, I'm kind of doing it this month. So I, but I'm rolling towards like finishing quarter three goals that I set for myself. And, and then how do I sort of like use that pla as a platform to build into the quarter four goals, you know, so usually it'll be, um, it'll be like a marketing goal, like I'm going to five, you know, I'm going to do three different things to get newsletter people, or I'm going to do like that, like, let's say that, like, mm -hmm. um, to get subscribers, I'm going to do use these new techniques in the next three months. And then my thinking is then the next quarter, when I have those extra subscribers, how do I, you know, so I try to like, look at everyone as like, I have like a marketing goal, a creative goal, a business goal. And then I have like a goal for like, the, it, it's sort of like a scares you goal. Um, <laughs> like the thing that I'm not, the thing that I know I need to do, but I'm not doing it. And cause I will, like we discussed in, in, in the C podcast, Eric, Eric part two, like I can really <laughs> avoid doing things that I'm not good at because I it, look, I'm good at this. I'll just keep doing this. So I have to push myself a little differently with those. So, so my, so, my scares me goal is I need a, I need to do a, I need to do some video for my website, for my business website. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's really a big hump for me to get over. You know, I, I make every excuse. I don't have a professional studio. I don't have professional cameras. And then I go look at people who have video on their sites and they don't have professional studios or cameras. So I have to, you know, get over some of those things. Like, oh, I wore that shirt seven years ago in a video. I can't wear that now. Like, I will make up any excuse. <laughs> so I, what I think is interesting in the goal setting conversation is like, I, the different motivations that I need for each one, it's really have to be careful so that I'm not setting four goals for the quarter that require real pushing. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I have to have some soft goals. Like I am going to finish that novella this, this quarter, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to do that. That's easy. I know I'm going to do that, but I have to have that one to pat myself on the back. So I feel better about this one. So it's a little bit of like mind games with yourself, you know, that comes into this for me. Not I mind want, games, but just motivators. You have motivators, to know how to motivate yeah. yourself. Yeah. So um, I'm just going to push back. I just watched a couple of Becca Siam videos yesterday on our quick cast. Oh, yeah. And so when you said that, you know, you're, you want to push yourself to do the video on your, on your site, but you've been procrastinating and trying to figure out, you know, find ways to not do it. So then questioning the premise, like what, do you need to have video on your website? Why do you need to have video on your website? Is there another another way that you can? Well, I taught, you know, in a strictly business sense, my the SEO person who does the SEO for my website says, look, you could boost these, all of these blogs in a considerable way. If you had a, a YouTube channel that was, you know, that was for your, for your business and it will help, it'll boost those those blogs, underperforming blogs on my site, you could get some some better juice with those. And this, you know, the numbers prove that that would work. That's how sort of like, that's, that is how phobic I am sometimes about pushing myself to do those new things. Like I can have like a quantifiable end. And it's still a struggle for me to say like, all right, I'm just going to struggle through a couple of videos for the better of, you know, for the, for better results. I, I still, I still struggle with, with it. 
but I do. I mean, I've written some scripts. I've gotten, I've booked out the time to do it, created a spot in my home. So I'm getting there, but I should have done this a year ago. Shoulda, a lot of shouldas. What were those? Uh, you said you have a creative goal, a marketing goal, a scares me goal. And was there one more? Just like a business goal. Business like, goal. Like okay. a, yeah. It's a, a business goal for me is something that I, I have to be in control of because I can't, I can't set the goal of I need 10 new clients in the next three months because I'm not entirely in control mm -hmm. of just the whims of the market. Like I, I lost, I got a client and lost a client in the last week. Um, I lost a client. I, I, I didn't lose, like it wasn't that somebody fired me. It's that I, I had a client that I thought I was going to be able to convert and I didn't. Mm -hmm. The funny thing was the one that I got, I could have swore from the first conversation that it wasn't going to work out. And it did. And then it was the other way. I had great mm -hmm. chemistry with the other person and they decided to go elsewhere. So I can't, for business goals, I can't set goals that I can't control. But if I, if the goal is I'm going to, you know, perform these tasks that I know I can do, then if I know the, if I know what the, what the, what they're going to do for my business, then I can just hope for those other outcomes. So I'll set things like four new blogs, write on, you know, blog on these topics, um, find three new places to distribute blogs, those kind of things. Like, um, will be like business goals. Yeah. Things that you have control over, which is important when you're making a goal, then it's not a wish. It's a, <laughs> yeah. Like you can my have goal an intention a... to, you know, collect right. new clients or, or build your mailing list, but yeah, in order you're not fully in control of that. So creating yeah. a goal statement is one that would have yeah you have to have it control over it and i like right. the ideas that you came up with in order to draw new clients your content marketing that's the way to do right. it really yeah i think sometimes i see, when i hear people setting goals I'll, I'll hear goals that are you know again like i'm going to get five new clients five new clients i have a colleague that will say that i'm going to get five new clients this quarter well what are you how are we going to do that like mm -hmm. that's that puts a lot of pressure on on something that's out of your control. So yeah, that's an important and, part of goal, anything, knowing what you control. Yes. And, and then breaking that down, like you said, so that's the next stage. Um, so this is my, with for stickers. those who are on the radio, you are missing a sticker page right now <laughs> on the video. You're missing a sticker page. This is my mid-year passion roadmap. Yeah. Cool. So I, uh, came up with very author specific, nothing else is in here. And I tried to be um, like super essential. Like the thing that I want to work on for the rest of the year is my memoir. I want to publish that January 1st. So I made another list. I had to break it down because, you know, writing a book is a huge <laughs> or revising in my case, revising a book is a huge project and it's too big of a bite to chew. You know what I mean? You have to break it down right. into steps. And so, um, because part of my creative fun play is playing with my planner and stickers and stuff. I created another page that <laughs> is all of the steps I need to do to publish this book. So, so having those little action steps help, right. help create forward momentum. And, and like you said, the, the easy goals, you know, like once you cross something off the list, it feels good and you have energy oh, yeah. and to, to work on the next step or work on the next goal. So I want I'm, anybody to know, like, so I'm holding up my goal thing. So there's no stickers here. <laughs> this is an old um, yellow notebook or what? No, like a legal pad. And there's just a lot of check marks. I spilled some beer on this page right here. Um, <laughs> I love that you have such a like, I mean, it's, I, <laughs> I, I have to, like this to me, like is about as fancy as I can get, but I do the whole, you know, this is Q3 goals. And so I've got mm -hmm. the headering and then I've got the steps underneath it and I go through and I check them, you know, I check them off as I go. Um, and I get the big satisfaction out of, so like, I, here's, here's something I accomplished. It's got a great big X through it. Nice. So when I go flipping through this thing, I'm like, look at that X. Yeah. I don't even have to, I don't have to look under that X anymore. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. So what do you, hmm, I was going to say, what motivates you to finish 
things on your list, but that's kind of a different topic. But did you have something that just pops up? Um, I mean, I just think it's my personality type. Like mm -hmm. I, I, I want, I know what I, I have. Well, I, yeah, my personality type tends to be like, I'm like an, I am an INTJ on the Myers-Briggs. Is that Myers? That's Myers-Briggs, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's like the director, you know, like I have that sort of like over the top, you know, the big view of things. And I tend to, to, I embrace that. Even when I was doing case management before I stepped out as a full-time writer, it was, I really like the big picture things and I'm really motivated by the incremental growth in the big picture as you accomplish little things. I, mm -hmm. I like, I, I really get a huge kick out of just the little, the nudge. Um, so yeah. I'm, Do you find that making the quarterly goals gives you enough of that overview? Do you do you also know like kind of a hint of what's coming in the next quarter also? Like you don't map it out maybe, but you're like, okay, this is for this quarter. I'm going to push this other idea off to the next quarter. I know that every one of those, like especially the scares me stuff is the things that I'm going to. I do that with the real hope and belief that once I get over that hump, do the thing, if I do the thing that scares me, I will inevitably integrate that into, it won't scare me anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's say I, I'm going to do these videos and put them up on my site. There's two outcomes. Hopefully they do what the SEO techno technical person says and drives traffic. But then on the other hand, I will have broken that wall down. Mm -hmm. And so maybe, maybe I create a video you know next year we're talking about me creating a video channel for my books you know i'm doing like a a weekly 10 minute video about my about my author world like i i do everything hopefully with like just this is just going to open another door and another mm -hmm. door and another door so so you big, don't so the oh, big picture includes like oh leaving something leaving that door open yes for thing for opportunities to come in yeah Definitely. It's, it kind of fits into that author, right? You're writing a book to complete a book, to get that hit of satisfaction to, to, and it sounds like, to me, it always sounds a little bit of vain, but just like to, you know, kind of, you get to strut around with that a little bit when you publish a book, like you, you talk about it, you bring it out, you accomplish something, but it opens the door to the next book and the next book and the next book. And if you're building that author brand and building that author um, business, then yeah, you can't have a stack of a backlist of 10 books without one and two and three and four. So I, I, I yeah, I think dead end goals can be, they're, they're the ones that stick on my list a little too long. It just, they're just like, this is, I'm just going to accomplish this and finish this. It's, it's not opening another door. Mm. It's, it's, you know, I don't see where the, where the, I'm planting the seed and, you know, how that's going to keep going. I guess those time. are maybe more tasks rather than strategies. Good point. Good point. So you can always change the task. You can decide that that task isn't going to serve the strategy as well as you right. thought, and you can move it off the list. And maybe that's why it doesn't feel compelling to do. What What is one thing from your list that you um, are going to work on this month? I kind of thought you were going to ask that. Um, well, I mean, the video, I've, I've set aside some video time um, for the last week of the month. Elijah goes back to school, so it'll it'll probably be like either the, the Wednesday or either the 31st or the 1st. I'll have the afternoons in the house and I'll be able to, to shoot some video. It'll be quiet. Mm -hmm. um, what other goals? So I'm going to have to flip through my... Um, so one of the other goals, I I have I pub, I publish a lot of blogs on my author on my writer site, but not on my author site. And I've got got a bunch of blogs just stacked up. So my goal was to put, to put those out. So I'm going to commit some time. Um, I think it's next week I've set aside to just go in, publish those blogs, schedule them out. So they're coming out over the next nice. couple of months. Um, yeah. That's cool. planning a retreat for myself uh, is on that list. Um, I have some sort of mastermind story arc stuff to work on, and I just want to take two days out. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to do that on Thursday afternoon. That's my weekly time. So 
Thursday between one and one and three is my go sit down, get a Spanish coffee, mm, plug in my headphones, and do some mastermind, some big thinking. Like what That's do I want? Awesome. One of what my about goals, you? Like what are in the yeah. next quarter? I would like to really re-engage my mailing list. Um, and so that's just sort of like an intention, you know, I haven't broken it down into those action steps, but that would, you know, that's something that isn't totally in my control, whether a mailing list subscriber re-engages or not, you know, but I can put out newsletters. I can send emails. I can come up with, um, topics. I can, I can write, new little cookies, you know, and send them out to the mailing right. list just to surprise and delight the ones that are there. And, you know, so those are some things that I could do to re-engage my mailing list, just, you know, email them more often. <laughs> right. And the results will be what the results will be. And then you can kind of hone once you, right. Is this the way you think of it? Once you start doing that and you start getting in the habit of re-engaging that mailing list, then you can start looking at results a little bit more critically. Cause all right, yeah, I want to get Yeah, if you 10. track, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think putting some of those like results before the, like re-engagement is goal one. Goal two would be like, all right, now let's get some results out of that. Let's, let's yeah, refine. Let's clean it up and, yeah. and get rid of the people that don't really want to be there. And, and I would really That's like so to hard. redo so my um, automation sequence. Yeah. You know, it's you redo that. years old. I think I wrote it in 2016 or 20, you know, something like that it was old. It it's old. works. It works. Here's... But, you know, I need to, because people respond to them. Right. But I need to right. like change it up and update it, I guess. That's how I find like the real, I just did mine a year ago and it, the, the engagement in the mailing list prior to doing a good onboarding sequence and after before and after lights, you know, night and day couldn't be nice. any more different, but you also, it's a way to tease out people who really want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. um, so I keep all those people in like a list. And then when I, I, I'll go to them and say, look, I just asked for ARC readers. Do you sure you don't want to be an ARC reader? Because you're, <laughs> you look like you're interested. And most of the, oh, I didn't know you would want me. Great. <laughs> um, so there's, yeah. Anyway, mailing list is a whole nother topic. It's a, it's the biggest topic sometimes in my world. So, Well, yeah. Then read Tammy Labreck's new book, Newsletter Ninja 2. I don't know how I'm new gonna. it is, but it's the next one. Um, And in terms of is there anything else you want to say about planning or? I think the last topic we should talk about is the, what do you do when you look at your to-do list or your goal, quarterly goal list, whatever, however you do it. Mm -hmm. And you say, wow, I didn't do that. Like, what's your, what do you If do? I If I have something that keeps on my list and I don't do it and I keep moving it to the next week and the next week or. Or if it's just like a, a six month plan or something like that, and and I the six months are over and it hasn't happened yet. Um, first, I will take into account like so what did happen in that six months? Like, right. did I start a new job? Did you know a family member was were they in the hospital? You know, like right. what life thing happened that interrupted that? And if there isn't anything, then then usually for me, if if a task or a to-do list item has not been done, it's because either I just don't want to do it. So then I can question the premise. Thank you, Becca Syme, and find out, is it something I really need to do? Like, why do I think I need to do this? If it is something I need to do, you know, like taxes or something like that, yeah. then I could um, delegate it. I could hire somebody else to do it. Right. Um, I can delay it as long as possible, <laughs> or I can, you know, just do it and get it done with. And, and in order to do that, usually it requires more steps. So I haven't broken it down into small enough steps that I'm comfortable with because sometimes you see the item on the list and it's just too big and, and you just can't make yourself go there because it requires so many other things to do first that you haven't thought of. And so, yeah, yeah breaking it Sounds down right. even smaller. That's what I do. Yeah. Similar. I, I, I tend to say, 
either I look at it like I, I I tend to look at the big picture. Like, all right, I set five goals for this quarter, and I'm not I've not done this one. Did I set too many? Did I not scale things right? Did I not give myself a softball goal that I knew I could accomplish? Um, so I, I try to be. I try to give the the goal a little bit of the benefit of the doubt, like maybe it was me, not the goal. But if I do find that, like, yeah, I, I should have been able to do that, then, yeah, it's just got to move it, re reprioritize it, or just eliminate it. Some I've just there's some things I've just eliminated, you know, yep, that I just it. I can't. I'm not going to get to this, or it's not important, or the outcomes are not clearly. I don't see the outcome. So, yeah, I went to. Um... Dean Wesley Smith's uh, master business mastery class a few years ago and several years ago now, but one thing that came up in there, I think it was Catherine, Chris, uh, Catherine Rush, Christine, Catherine Rush. I knew there was another word in there. Um, she was the one I think said it. Uh, there was the four D's um, ditch it, delay it, delegate it. Or no, how, did I say that wrong? Oh no. Those sound right. I mean, Ditch it, delay Either, it, delegate it. Yeah, or do it. Yeah, those yeah. are the, the, the four Ds. If you don't want to do it, pass it on to someone else or just don't do it. And I think what you said is, I mean, there's things you might delay that you have to do, like taxes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, if you're talking about practical home things, like you have to figure out what's for dinner because it's a <laughs> meal and you're probably not going to be happy if you don't get it. But when it comes to the other things, you know, you can be philosophical about it. You can examine those goals and, and you, you're not beholden to them. You're not a failed, you're not failing in the, in the exercise. If you're not, um, nailing every one, you know, perfectly in the quarter, you're just finding that the exercise is more complicated than mm -hmm. at first glance, I guess. Okay. Well, we are out of time Oh my gosh, this already. morning. And, um, I think our next episode I would really like to talk about crowdfunding. I haven't oh looked at that in a really long time. And and Patreon is is a, a way of crowdfunding, Indiegogo, Kickstarter. I know you did a Kickstarter years ago. I would love to pick your brain about that. No? That was a long time that ago. That was a yeah. long time ago. I remember hearing you talk about it at a Willamette Raiders conference, I believe. Yeah. I yeah, it was an interesting exercise. I'm 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 again talk about goals that are on the horizon like mm. you know one day i want to get back into doing this so so perfect yeah. perfect episode topic then so perfect all right timing. well thank you for joining me this morning and it was my pleasure thank you i'm gonna go walk my dogs now oh enjoy it <laughs> have a great day have a great week bye-bye bye-bye